Today we will talk about a complex disease genetics of glaucoma. That's a complex disease and we will discuss how to decipher such a complex disease when you are trying to understand the molecular genetics of it. Before getting to the actual disease, uh, let me first tell that classically when you deal with a genetic disease, if it's Mendelian, then you get a family, you do linkage analysis and by that you know the region of the chromosome that is likely to harbor the gene and then you perform something called a positional cloning approach and you identify the gene in a very painstaking manner. That is the way by which most of the diseases that we know today in the textbooks are uh, their genes have been identified. Somehow, the same strategies apply to other set of diseases that we hear most often today like diabetes, like cardiovascular disease, like hypertension and glaucoma also falls there. The same strategy doesn't seem to work. The question is why does it work and how do you tease out the molecular genetics of it? So, in other words, there are genetic diseases that are caused by mutations that are necessary and sufficient to precipitate the phenotype. They are Mendelian diseases and they are typically rare. And there are other diseases where multiple variations play a role and neither of them individually are necessary or sufficient to cause the disease. So, they are the multifactor complex diseases. Uh, so, is it as if that gene and environment is part of a continuum and every phenotype both of them contribute? Uh, the classical Mendelian diseases are mostly contributed by genetic factors and less of environmental factors, whereas the, um, the other more complex diseases are more environmental than genetic and glaucoma sits in the middle where uh, both gene and environment plays an important role and that's what makes it much more complex to deal with. So glaucoma is a neurodegenerative disease uh, where what happens is silently without any pain a person loses its peripheral vision and only the person only get to realize that they are losing the vision once they have lost about 70% of their vision when only their central vision remains. That's why it's called a tunnel disease. And what happens is within the eye there is retina in the back of the eye and in front of the eye, we have aqueous humor filtration process. There is a tissue called trabecular meshwork. And when the front of the eye, the trabecular meshwork becomes unable to filter out the aqueous humor, the pressure builds up in the eye and it puts pressure on the back of the eye. And the assault goes on the retinal ganglion cell layer, and those cells start to die off. And they are neuronal cells, so they cannot divide and replenish and that cell death actually causes the blindness in glaucoma. So this is what happens in the disease and glaucoma is the largest irreversible cause of blindness in the world and right now the estimate is there are about 100 million people affected with the disease and there are many subtypes. Uh, this talk will be focused on one particular subtype called primary open angle glaucoma which is the major subtype accounting for more than 50% of the total disease body. So there are many genetic loci that are known for uh, POAG. Uh, there are about 20 genetic loci known and about 6 genes are known for it so far. But putting them all together they do not explain more than 5% of the disease body. So 95% of the genetic cause we still don't understand. That's what makes it exciting to work on rock genetics. There is one other added advantage for glaucoma genetics which is very rare and not possible to do for other genetic diseases. If you can identify a person with a mutation that will precipitate the disease later on in life, in other words if you identify pre-symptomatic individuals, you can actually do medical intervention and slow down the progression of the disease, increasing the quality of life uh, with a better eyesight. So that's another big advantage of working in glaucoma. So uh, there are multiple genes known and also there are by linkage study more than 70 loci are known but as I just said that put them together they don't explain more than 5% disease burden. So with this uh, we started working on this uh, problem for more than a decade ago and we were the first one uh, to publish the genetic mutations in Indian glaucoma patients. And this particular mutation is a glutamine to histidine mutation in 48 codon of the myosinin gene. 
and the interesting thing as uh, is after us a lot of other people also publish about this mutation but after over 15 years of the this research on this particular variant this has never found outside india but every corner of india when some patients were tested this was always been found so this is a mutation unique to indian population and always associated with the disease which makes it this this particular disease this particular mutation very unique uh, yeah, in the in the disease genetic setting we have also reported um, a very severe mutation for poag where all over the world this is opposite to the previous example this has been found in every population studied so far and all over the world uh, people have found this always associated to be very severe form of the disease and uh, so in our example also anybody who had this mutation were blind by the time they were 18 years old and uh, this a particular mutation was found in a family on which i would like to elaborate a little further uh, this particular family we had a large family and here only a segment of the family is shown and in that large family we found um, we found both affected individuals with a mutation and unaffected, of course, without the mutation. And we found three children uh, who did not have the, who had the mutation but did not yet show the disease. They were young enough before the disease onset happened. So we could inform the doctor that they are at high risk of the disease. Based on that information, doctor medically intervened and their uh, eyesight could be lengthened by 10 more years of their lives which is a big uh, big change uh, in terms of genetic diseases so that's a direct that goes on to show the direct relevance of doing this kind of study in uh, our own population so there is hope at the end of the tunnel and we have also uh, shown functional ways of characterizing these mutations from different populations of the world and um, uh, my colleagues have published a large database of Indian genetic uh, variation, uh, variations, mutations which is a, is a gold mine for, for uh, picking up mutations that is relevant for our population for particular diseases so all these variants are part of that particular database uh, and uh, recently we have also published a gene duplication as a diagnostic marker for glaucoma this is a gene duplication about 700 KB which is only associated with uh, normal tension glaucoma a, a form of glaucoma where the trabecular meshwork filtering blockage does not occur but retinal ganglion cell still occurs despite the mechanical pressure nobody knows why that happens but this particular genetic mutation seems to be specific to this group of disease and other than us, this has also been reported from Caucasian and Japanese populations and about 2% of the normal tension glaucoma patients seem to have this mutation. So we have recently published this as a novel inclusion in the diagnostic panel for glaucoma. So there are a lot of unbiased strategies that one can also take for a complex genetics like glaucoma, like genome wide association study, studies for copy number variations, studies on exome sequencing. We have uh, we have addressed all these issues and we have published on all these aspects of the, of the, uh, of the particular disease. Uh, we think, I personally think that uh, glaucoma genetics has reached a stage where it can go into diagnostic setting, at least for the particular variants where genotype phenotype correlation is very high. And incidentally, um, IGIB's GOMET panel actually offers uh, the screening for myceline gene for glaucoma patients um, so that that should be followed through and uh, we want this this to be included in various diagnostic studies in the future there are a lot of people who has been instrumental in this uh, these works that has been described in the study and uh, this work has been funded both by nationally and internationally and I also thank all the patients who have given consent to include them in these studies. Thank you.